Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this episode of Managing Uncertainty, I want to dive into how geopolitical shifts are impacting crisis management and resilience planning for organizations around the world. As businesses become more globalized, we know that they are increasingly exposed to new risks, and these risks stem from geopolitical instability. Trade wars, regional conflicts, regulatory changes, and political shifts all become part of daily life for many organizations. So we'll talk in this episode about how businesses can prepare for these uncertainties and adjust their crisis management and business continuity strategies in order to stay resilient. So the first point I want to make is talking a little bit about just what do we mean by geopolitical risk when it comes to business. With geopolitical risk, we're talking about the political, economic, and social instability in specific regions or countries that can impact your global business operations. Some examples of these that are happening have happened over the last couple of years include Brexit, the UK leaving the European uh, Union and community, uh, the war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, trade tension between the United States and China, the conflict between Israel, Hezbollah, and Hamas that has involved several countries and geographical areas uh, there in the Middle East, and of course, regulatory shifts that are happening in emerging, mar in emerging markets. These geopolitical risks can have a number of impacts on your organization. They can impact your supply chain, your compliance with these new regulations that come into play, they can increase or impact your operational costs, and they can impact your ability to access the markets or even raw materials and resources that you need. The key takeaway here is when it comes to geopolitical risk, that businesses need to understand that these risks are not confined to just a specific region or a specific country. They may, uh, they're going to occur, of course, in a country or region, but they will have ripple effects across the globe and impact your entire organization. Let's talk a little more about how some key, some key ways that geopolitical risks can impact crisis management. So of course, you, most companies have some type of global supply chain, whether that's raw materials, access to markets, access to manufacturing in other markets, or even a distributed global workforce that is part of your supply chain, so to speak. These supply chains are vulnerable to these political upheavals because the political decisions in one country can cut off your supply lines and cause shortages across the organization. For example, the trade tensions between the U.S. and China cause significant disruption to the semiconductor market and access to certain chips and components of chips that U.S. companies needed. That was due to the geopolitical tension that went on between the United States and China. Economic instability is another area where currency fluctuations and inflation rates that are tied to political decisions made within a country or a market like the EU can drastically impact your cost structure. For example, the impact of sanctions on Russia when the Ukraine Russia-Ukraine war began had a significant impact on a number of companies that led to drastic currency devaluation of the Russian ruble. The sanctions, of course, also meant that many organizations could no longer do business with or in Russia and had to make significant changes that they had to manage. The third area is regulatory compliance. Sudden changes in trade regulations or sanctions can create compliance nightmares. And of course, we just talked about the Russia-Ukraine war as an example of this. But any new sanctions on a country can force companies to have to reevaluate their suppliers, their supply chain, the locations of their employees, or even their access to that market. The key takeaway here is that geopolitical risk can cause ripple effects that make traditional crisis management approaches less effective. The third area I want to focus on is just some best practices on crisis management in a geopolitically uncertain world. And we certainly live in a world today that is quite uncertain. The first is where appropriate, you should diversify your supply chain. Relying on suppliers from multiple regions helps mitigate the risk of disruption from a single geopolitical event. Um, think about redundancy by having suppliers in at least two or three different regions, and hopefully suppliers that are from more than one organization, so that disruption to one organization does not ripple 
in across the entire market. The second, I think, are just good tabletop scenario planning. So you should anticipate multiple scenarios based on potential geopolitical risks. And you can use stress testing or exercises to really talk through and practice those scenarios. It's a type of wargaming. Um, using these stress testing for different risk factors like embargoes, uh, sanctions, political instability, or regime change are all some things to consider. Next is just strengthening your internal communication channels. Fast and transparent communication is critical during a geopolitical crisis. So ensuring that your crisis team is informed and is able to rapidly respond to sudden regulatory changes or shifts in trade policies is an important part of your strategies. You should have regular briefings from an intelligence perspective with your crisis management team. Make sure that your legal risk and compliance teams are a part of those conversations. And this is a great example of where using your crisis management process can help you make sure your team, your teams are informed and prepared as things shift rapidly. Again, flexibility and adaptability are really key to resilience in the face of this type of geopolitical uncertainty. Lastly, I want to talk about the role of leadership in managing geopolitical uncertainty. So your leadership team needs to foster a culture of adaptability and model quick decision making. The ability to make quick informed decisions can be the difference between sinking or swimming in these geopolitical crises. Important stakeholder communication and having regular communication with your stakeholders, including your customers, your employees, your investors, if that's appropriate, helps maintain confidence during uncertain times. Companies that have transparent leadership um, during Brexit, for example, had stronger shareholder confidence. And then lastly, for this section, partnering with governments and non-governmental organizations. I think in geopolitically sensitive areas, businesses may need to work closely with local governments or NGOs to navigate regulatory and social challenges. What you want with your leadership team is to ensure that they are fully informed, that they're able to balance that strategic foresight with the immediate crisis response actions that you need. I have found it valuable with leaders to build um, solid triggers and actions where as you begin to see instability arise to get ahead of that through leadership conversation set some clearly defined triggers so that you know when you cross those triggers here are things that you are going to do as a component of that lastly let's talk about some actionable steps for, uh, moving forward and how you can improve your maturity in this area. The first is to conduct regular risk assessments. Geopolitical risks are gonna evolve and they will move quickly. Making sure that your risk assessments at a country or regional level are frequent and updated is important. You may even wanna consider updating two to four times a year or even on a quarterly basis. You wanna develop contingency plans for major markets. Again, identifying key geopolitical risks in those markets and then creating tailored contingency plans. Again, I have found the triggers, uh, thresholds, actions approach to be a good way of doing this. And lastly, engage with experts. You can work with geopolitical risk consultants and local experts to stay ahead of what is happening and stay ahead of changes in regulations, trade policy, and political climate. Again, preparation is everything when it comes to this area of risk. The more that you plan ahead, the more you use your crisis process as that way of convening and talking about what's going on and keeping your crisis management team informed, the better equipped your organization will be to handle, handle geopolitical crises. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.